Hello everyone, this is Lawrence making a video. This one has come from a request from my Facebook friends because I buy a lot of um, thrift store vinyl, okay? And she asked, well Lawrence, how do you know if they're in playable condition? So this video, I'm going into that. Um, what was that sound? Okay. Um, I made my previous video was uh, a, a bunch of um, vinyl I got at a thrift store where they priced it down to um, 10 cents each, okay? Because they're trying to uh, clear out their inventory. And I found some fantastic country music uh, albums there. Um, four really good Charlie Pride albums, excellent condition, still shrink wrap, and along with a, a number of other classic uh, country artists. So if you get a chance, watch that video. Um, and I'll be doing a follow-up video because I went back there and looked through it again and picked out some more. So I cleaned all the good stuff out. Um, there's really two types of uh, first um, of vinyl shopping, okay? Um, there's, um, you know, buying the new 180 gram new releases or reissue, you know, the good quality stuff you find at the independent record stores. And then there's the thrift store um, um, shopping, okay? Which you can find a lot of really cool eclectic music. You have to look through a lot of what I call grandma and grandpa records. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, crap, but um, if you're persistent, you look through everything, you could usually pull out some uh, really interesting finds. And um, for example, found these two. And we'll go into uh, looking at the conditions in a minute. This is a Lady Smith Black Mumboza if I pronounce it right, album release in 1987. It's a South African vocal group. They are a South African vocal group uh, formed in 1960. And they are the um, uh, singers who um, uh, recorded with Paul Simon's Graceland album. And you can hear their, their vocals on that album throughout, especially on uh, uh, Diamonds on the Soul of Her Shoes which is a great track. And um, got this album here, Roberta Flack, featuring Donnie Hathaway, which was um, came out in 1979, and uh, were the last recordings they made together before Donnie's uh, tragic death. Now, these two albums were in excellent condition. I mean, just great condition. You open them up, um, when you in the thrift store and you pull out your the ones you are considering buying, um, you look you look at do a visual look at the records. What I usually do is go through the rack, pull out all the ones I want to buy that I'm considering, and do a, a process of elimination of looking at each vinyl condition wise. Okay. Um, and I, I tried to be courteous to the other people in there, and as um, I will tell them, hey, I got a stack here. I'm looking through. I might not buy some of them. So as you look, I'll have some more my what I call my putbacks, you know. Um, so I, I do that. I, I go ahead and um, instead of you know looking at vinyl, um, pulling it out, looking at it, and then continuing my search, I just go ahead and pull all the titles that I'm considering buying it. Maybe I might pull it out and do a, a, just a quick look at to make sure it's not scratched up to hell. Okay, Then it goes in my consideration pile if it looks good. Once I do that, you know, I got a, like a stack or maybe three or whatever. Um, I, I examine each uh, vinyl very carefully with the best lighting I can in the store. I usually bring a right here I got it 
a pack of these um, um, handy, you know, pocket tissues. That way, if you have a, a vinyl that has some spots on it, somebody may have sprayed something on it that uh, you can see that dried, and you can see you can wet one of these and rub it on one of the spots to make sure it comes out. Look, do your search. You might want to go to the restroom if they have a restroom there. Wet one down to put it in your pocket so it'll already be moist. You don't have to uh, venture to the restroom. Okay, so that's tip one right there. Um, so you got your, you, you know you got your selections and you, you pull out each piece of vinyl and give it a good looking over. Okay. It may be very clean, like it hasn't been played that much. Perfect. If you don't see any, you know, scratches that you can feel, if there's a scratch and you can feel it, that means that scratch has worked its way into the groove and you'll be able to hear it. So, you don't want to buy that one unless there's one scratch on one track that it's not a, a, a track you think you'll be interested in, but everything's okay. If it's a track that goes to like two or three songs, you probably want to avoid that one. Uh, if it's just a light surface scratch you can't feel, it'll probably be all right. You want to avoid a vinyl that looks like it's been run over or rubbed through with sandpaper, okay? Uh, a lot of times you'll be able to just do a quick look, ooh, uh, uh, put that back, okay? So it, it's all in the visuals, okay? Uh, also, I don't have mine with me. They make these magnifying glasses with a light in it. You want to bring one of those too. So if there's a, a certain area that's questionable, you can put magnifying glass on it and the light and to get a, a better look at it. A more detailed look at it. Um, also, the, the, the middle hole where you put drop the vinyl on the turntable, right there, a lot of people will put it in and miss it and do a little rubbing on, on the label around the hole. If you see a lot of those, that means um, the record's been played a lot, but not necessarily, it, it, that doesn't necessarily make it non-playable. If they just took care of the record but um, was bad at aiming for the hole, that's fine. But uh, uh, a lot of marks around there can indicate uh, how often the record's been played. And if, it's been, if you have a lot of those marks and it's been played a lot but the owner took care of it, that's fine. But a lot of times you'll see a lot of those marks where the record wasn't taken care of. Also, there's something called paper lash lacerations, too. When you slide a, a, a vinyl in and out of the inner sleeve here, I try to avoid contact with this. Uh, what I do is put it on my knee here, do a little squeeze right there, and put, put the vinyl in and out that way so it opens up and the vinyl has as little contact with the inner sleeve as possible. Uh, too much rubbing against that will cause the, a, a, a coating a, like a um, paper um, coating uh, wear. Okay? And if you look at the vinyl in, the, um, in a certain way in a certain light, you, you could see it. Okay. It's sort of like a, uh, a, a rubbing like that look. It doesn't really affect the, the, um, um, the, the, the quality of the sound. It may a little bit here and there. Um, and I wouldn't, uh, that would not prevent me from buying a record that, other than that, is in really good shape. Okay? Also, used to be that record albums would have the instead of the white smooth inner uh, sleeve 
uh, it would be a heavier paper stock that's kind of uh, grayish right here and it's not as smooth it's a little bit more like um, sandpaper so you want to make sure you have an inner sleeve for these and you slide it in and out of the inner sleeve you don't want to rub it against the uh, this type of paper stock here and some of them are you could really feel them okay it's like rubbing uh, a vinyl against sandpaper so basically the rule is just look at the vinyl and this one needs a this four channel London four phase stereo needs a good cleaning um, I'll talk about cleaning in a minute where the Roberta Flack one needs a good cleaning too but not as bad as the uh, four channel stereo London um, so you know it's all the visual just want to avoid records that looks like it's you know it's been through the uh, uh, grind um, you want to avoid records that have uh, uh, scratches you can feel uh, unless it's one on one or two songs you don't care about and once you buy a stack of records or one or two or three or however many you got to give them a good what I call a sink cleaning I got a sneeze coming on so I'm kind of writing that out um, which I won't be able to do <laughs> okay it's kind of <coughs> okay I made a sneeze sound like a cough uh, once you get your records home there's a uh, method called the deep sink cleaning and there's all kinds of videos I'll post a link of mine it's mine is quite long because I show you how to set your kitchen up so you can clean a lot of records quickly okay but it's basically you know you get some dawn you get a certain sponge okay um, and I have the brand there I forgot the name of it uh, it's a soft sponge and um, dawn clear 91 pure pure rubbing alcohol cotton swabs and, and terry cloth towels and you do a, a deep sink cleaning of all your uh, thrift store vinyl because these records are old you don't know what people put on them and some people would really put some strange stuff on them to clean them also they've probably been left out where, where dust and dirt accumulated fingerprints uh, body oil from fingerprints so um, you want to get that all cleaned out and um, you see all that stuff is bad for your stylus it could uh, decrease the life of the stylus but you clean it up it, it, the, there's a tremendous improvement of the sound so um, that's my method and also if you buy vinyl thrift store vinyl and there's no inner sleeve you want to go ahead and just buy your pack self a pack of inner sleeves you can get a hundred of them for like a hundred I mean a hundred of them for like uh, twenty dollars you know and um, so you want to have an inner sleeve um, I appreciate everybody watching this video I'm my friend I hope that clears things up again it's all individuals the you know how it looks and what to look for what I mentioned um, if you have any suggestions yourself please feel free to leave them in the comment um, I welcome everyone's comments thumbs up comments are great and I want to thank you for watching this video have a nice day. Bye.